Uh, no, but I have just updated it. Strange, and that is very annoying as well. Yeah. At least we know for next time now, like a little bit more. I, to be honest, I never even knew that you could do it. No, I mean, well, me neither. So there's something to try, isn't it? Unless you can share screen, so half your screen is Swift, half your screen is Skype. I'm not too sure. Have the uh, join me dub selection. Okay, so what's basically happened, uh, which is um, quite strange, is uh, the video has renamed itself, so I've had to change the name of it. Uh, still looks the same to me. Oh, maybe it's just changed for me then. Well, I haven't refreshed the page. Maybe I should refresh it. See what happens. Nice thing. Yeah, nice populating. Give him a couple of minutes. Well, I'm pushing my tech uh, ability to, to the absolute limit this evening. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. This is not a race before you um, before you jump in. It's uh, I don't know whether or not the video has renamed itself. I don't think it's on. It's just looking for Ed Laverick. Oh, well. We've gone live, but it's it might be... If you go to my channel, I bet it's gone live on a different title. Yeah, I bet. And... I don't know why it's done that. Oh, no, 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 it's right. Yeah, that's it, Josh. So, it's this is gonna make it. Um, this is gonna make it fun. So, we're not doing. Um, we're not doing a, a race. It is a group ride. The title's changed because uh, YouTube has done me over in traditional fashion. But um, it's a group ride with, we're riding with a couple of club mates. And we're also riding with Lewis, who's just commented on the game chat, for those of you that can see on the right hand side. And uh, Lewis it works for Lightlock. And he's also on the line as well, so I hope you can hear him because we are Skyping at the same time as live streaming. So, <laughs> this is all new to us, but hopefully, we're going to iron out any wrinkles. I'm going to turn up the desktop audio so you can hear whatever's happening at Lewis's end. Yeah, I think it sounds right to me. Yeah, I can see the levels are good here, so. Yeah, so apologies everyone, it's not going to be my typical suffering race. <laughs> we had too much of that on the weekend. Lewis, you did the, the hot route as well, didn't you? Which uh, okay. was, was it last weekend? I can't remember, time was going by and I don't really, 
even I'm losing track of time now with what's going on. Yeah, I had I I had a zip to for about six days before the whole thing and then just thought, okay, I'll do it and threw myself straight into the deep end. So uh, that was interesting. Yeah. I uh I chose uh, I chose my time wisely to do uh to do an after swift attempt. <laughs> Yes, so, uh, it was definitely interesting. Um, Ed, I don't, I don't know if you want to tell us about how Lightlock sort of support you and how we try and sort of give back to you in a way. Yeah, so um, I mentioned um, was it yesterday. Yeah, yesterday I did a live stream, and the day before I was chatting to a couple of people because I was putting it out there that that this ride was happening, and um, yeah, it's it's been really good. The uh, I met up with Lightlock and James. James used to be in Binya Cycling Club a, a while back and just rejoined, I think. But we um, we decided to uh, see if we could spread the word on safety. I think this year is uh, a little bit different for me with racing and, and all that other stuff going on. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was great to meet up with you and just see like what the product is and I think the product is very it's very innovative it's, it's pushing the boundaries to like when I when James first introduced me to it for example I was very shocked and very surprised as well as to like how come this stuff had never been done before it was all kind of very um you know having like a flexible lock and one that was like so light you could wear it I was like and that I obviously had to try for myself yeah um but uh, no, it's great that you know we, we've been able to have an affiliate link as well, and and have ten percent off, and try and keep bikes safer. Because I mean, particularly, well, it was around Christmas time when we met up, and it was like, yeah, funny that a lot of people would be get might be you know getting new bikes for Christmas and all this sort of thing, and you know it only makes sense to like if you're going to spend a couple of grand on a bike, then why not spend you know, an extra 60 quid or what on a, on a good bike lock, but also one that's made in Wales. Exactly. I think like what we're trying to do is sort of, you know, we, we stick into our roots, you know, like a product's made in Wales. You know, we, we do have the world's lightest flexible gold lock, the world's first insurance rated D-lock, flexible D-lock. Um, so it's, you know, it's pretty, it's, it's all innovative and just trying to, trying to do what the normal bike locks can't do at the moment, you know, like D-locks can't fit around lampposts. I was, I was Ken, and like the the, wear, the the wearability aspect of things, you know, our our, our gold range is to is to be worn. But um, yeah, then what we do for like the likes of you, Ed, then is uh, is, is an affiliate link, so people can get ten percent discount, but then ten percent goes back to yourself to support with uh, your season and obviously funding. Uh, being a privateer myself back in the day, I know how it feels. So yeah, yeah, it's really good, and uh, all of that information is uh, down in the description as well. Um, if you scroll down, uh, but we'll also put it in the chat as well, both yeah. the YouTube chat and of course we've got the game chat. It's very like I've literally uh, just had one rider from Flashley who uh, has signed up for Zwift a couple of hours ago and uh, they're doing this ride That's cool. and uh, you know they're trying to get their head around how you um, how you chat in the game and how you also have like for me it's very I guess it's very hands on you've got like I try to communicate with people as much as possible with the live stream but then of course you have um, you have the actual YouTube chat that's on my left hand side. That just uh, I'm, thankfully I'm not like as popular as some YouTubers where their stream just keeps the chat just keeps running and running and running. Yeah. And uh, on the right hand side you just get people in the in the race or just chatting mm. together. Although I don't think there's going to be much chatting today. I know how competitive some of these Binya riders are. Well, they've flown off the front, and I've realised we've all left you, so I'm just trying to hold back a little. We can all join back together, but uh, 
know, I, I know you have some sort of sprints or something lined up for us, some little challenges along the way, so we could probably put them in the chat, try and get everyone together and then go again, so. Yeah, yeah, I think, okay. uh, I think we're heading for Titans Grove, so we're going, uh, we're going right soon, and then it's going to be up and down, up and down. Perfect. Yeah. Well, we got a question. Whereabouts in Wales is the Loch made? Yeah, so um, it's all made in Swansea. So our head office is in Swansea, just on there, just in the waterfront. And then from there, there's about a 10 mile radius from start to finish. So we have a we have our sort of outsourced factory just outside in the valleys. And then it all comes to us in Swansea, um, all gets sort of checked. Um, all gets uh, put together, you know, make sure that the product's all right. Uh, you know, it gets checked by by hand, so that so the two girls can pack it, check every lock, and uh, yeah, it's pretty cool to see. You know, it's not just a machine into a box go. It's you know, machine check, put it in the storage. Okay, someone's bought it, check it twice before it goes in, sort of thing. So um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, did you mention about an insurance level certification? So, uh, yeah, so our, our locks are gold and silver rated. Um, and the gold is the world's lightest flexible gold lock on the market. And then we have the silver range, which is up to 50% lighter. And we also have the first world's first flexible insurance rated D lock as well. And they're, and they're all made in Wales then. Yeah, I would like to point out actually that. Um, oh hi Trish, <laughs> no idea what you're doing, sorry, <laughs> just, just keep typing and writing if you are, um, no I would like, like, I would like to say that, um, you know, I think it's very difficult when, uh, when a product says it's, you know, unbeatable or the best in the world and I think it always comes under scrutiny, I, I personally come under scrutiny for even like the performances I do, so, yeah. I think when you're pursuing excellence in something, you'll always get like, you know, oh, can you prove it? Can you do this? Can you do that? And I think the fact that you guys are just being, um, you're like bending the rules and like the fact that I could wear the lock and, yeah. I've, and I've used D locks in the past and it's just like the fact that I could wear it, I can kind of the the light lock silver which is what is it 600 grams yeah the one you got is 52 so it's 630 grams yeah yeah so it literally just about fits around my waist give or take um with a well look at yeah and um it it almost like because it's so light i don't feel like it's there yeah and uh, it doesn't even feel like clunky or nothing like that. It just uh, just generally feels like yeah. something that's been well thought through rather than you know yeah. something something that's just been made. Yeah. To do I like, uh, our CEO Neil, um, you know, he's he's an inventor when it comes to you know his career and uh, and his path. So like 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 you're saying, it all fits nice and it all fits just you know and you know it, everything's been thought out or thought out. It literally has you know like. When we just launched the Silver Flex to you, um, you know, we had about 16 different sizes and they were like, you know, only a couple of mil here and there. And, you know, everything's been thought of, the, 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 the locking mechanism gets waxed and, you know, to make the locking smoother, you know, the actual light sight is pretty interesting. Yeah. Things, things you probably wouldn't um, think of unless you went in there and saw what goes, goes on and behind the scenes sort of thing yeah I, de I definitely need to come down when this is all over yeah. hey, did, did you see that um, the triathlete um, reply to your video yeah I know Lionel replied yeah <laughs> it was fair play to him uh, I, I di well I, I didn't expect him to but um, he's also subscribed as well so <laughs> yeah for sure he's, he's pretty cool like I like how he's sort of upfront about everything. You know, he's like, 
this is bad, this is good. But he, he, he tells people their like weakness, which is his like weakness, which is really strange. Yeah. But and he, he comes out and he just proves it, you know. Yeah, I think that uh, I think that speaks a lot because it's almost like you're holding yourself accountable to the weakness, or yeah, or, or like if you set yourself a challenge, you hold yourself accountable to it. So if exactly. uh, if you tell like they always used to say, set yourself a goal and then shout it as loud as you can outside in the street, and if it yeah. if it doesn't scare you that you're doing it, then it's not a big yeah. enough goal. Um, doing it on YouTube, I think, is a different kettle of fish, um, <laughs> yeah. especially when he has like eighty thousand subscribers. But yeah, yeah. Um, I funny Josh in the uh, chat, just a couple of comments up there says, uh, "Would I wear it in a hill climb?" And I think James actually joked one time that yeah. I could actually wear it in a hill climb and probably still Perfect. have a pretty good showing because. 600 grand, I mean, it just goes to show that it, it, it is nothing. Yeah. Um, you know, it's like a full bottle of water. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, well, it's, it takes the way that, oh, I don't want to wear a lock or take a lock because it's too heavy. Yeah. You know, obviously for you, we're doing a race, you know, yes, you're probably not going to wear it, but when you're, you know, after you finish the race, after you're driving home, you know, if you stop, at least you've got something there which is light and easy to carry but, uh, no it's uh, I don't think you would make a massive difference I think you still beat a lot of the field <laughs> but, uh, no it's good oh I haven't done this one that I was with yet this, so this is new to me the um, oh guys what's this called now this is, uh, I just call it the desert, but it definitely, uh, it definitely has a name. Something flat? Yeah, if you go flat, I think. Yeah. But it kind of, um, so it has a, I, I'd say it's like a nice, nice section of up and down, like rolling climbs. For Tempus sure. Fujit flat, there we go, cheers Phil. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it, it goes through Tempest Fuji and you end up going into the um, like nature reserve. And uh, yeah, it's like, well, we raced, when did we race guys? Yesterday, um, the Deepak Fit Climbers Day and it was, uh, it was like, um, well, the label was a hilly race, but ended up having like a flattish finish which I kind of I, almost you wonder like it defeats the point of sure. having a having a hilly race and then having a flat finish but it did have a slight drag and we're going up that drag as well so yeah. we might um, we might use that <laughs> look at the drift is nearby yeah that's pretty cool my screen is pretty much all green yeah same here yeah this is the well to be fair this is the biggest turnout I've had in a in, um, yeah. in a group ride and I've always said we should do more of them because uh, especially with the elastic band effect it just like yeah, it, it really does a good uh, job of kind of the, the furthest person up the road is probably doing you know three, yeah, or four, yeah, three or four watts per kilo or something and then you know they're not going anywhere but um, no. well, still, I think it's it's quite nice because you can sort of like like what you do with, with your live streams. You can, you know, just have a more general discussion with people who maybe watch you more than the average viewer. And then obviously people can see, you know, people you know you're showing that you are you know you're part of the community. You're, you know, a beta boy through and through, and yeah, it's pretty cool to allow people to see that as well. Yeah, well, what I've noticed the last. Uh... The last week or so, I'm sure the people in the in the YouTube chat right now will testify to this, but we've really seen like a big um, spike in uh, subscribe. yeah subscribers, not, uh, views as well, but not just that, but like um, just retention rate and things. And I think it's got a lot to do with that Alpha Swift attempt that I think uh, it was kind of it kind of wasn't planned. I just 
wanted yeah. to give it my best shot and see if I could go under 34 minutes. And then yesterday, uh, the Indios race went up there. That was good. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think everybody was looking at Froome and the other guys. Actually, there was a funny shot of Froome <laughs> during the live stream and he was doing a proper washing machine. Uh, yeah, I saw that. But um, it was quite interesting to see the, 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 the actual depth of field they have there. More yeah. than, it's not just your gear rounds, your, your Chris Froome's. It's, you know, a lot of them are one world tours and any one of them could be, you know, team leader sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Who was your who, who was your stand up from that race yesterday? Well, Dennis was no surprise. Yeah. Um, I you know I think at the end of the day it comes down to well who's the strongest and I know it comes down to watts per kilo but you know it, you should you should never write off somebody who's a very, who's two time world time trial champion but I think. Uh, I knew I knew Dunbar obviously would climb well. I've raced with Dunbar in the past. Yeah. Um, Lawless had a good showing. Chris Lawless, roughly the same age as me, uh, he had a good showing at the start of the climb. It was interesting to see at the start as well that some of them yeah. went on uh, the attack. <laughs> started out, went off the front, and was it Ben Swift who was holding second for a while? Yeah, Swifty. He's doing well, to be fair. He is, yeah, and. Uh, um, keep forgetting now the triathlete. The, the one who won? No, um, he was with D uh, Dennis for a long time and then got dropped. Um, yeah, Cam, yeah. Cam Wolf. Yeah. Very good. He holds the uh, the bike record for the um, Tembi Ironman. Really? Ironman oh. Wheels, yeah. He, he turned up one year. Um, in preparation for the uh, for the corner for for the world, yeah, and uh, he went as hard as he could on the bike section to see if he could take a lot of time off it, and he did. And he broke the record for it. <laughs> um, but you know, ex ex pro rider, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not bad at all. No, like like he's back he's, he's back back pro now, but yeah. So obviously your uh, season plans have changed. So more of the YouTube to come. Yeah, well, changed drastically. I think. I mean, nobody knows what's going to happen. Um, it's kind of, if anything, we're using this time wisely. I think to to work on weaknesses, uh, maintain strengths. And I think somebody somebody sent me a message, Phil actually, who's in the chat. Um, I think we've really got to exploit this time that we have with Zwift and like with all these high profile riders that are riding and see what we can really do yeah. um, g given the opportunity. I think, uh, ironically, this was kind of what I was going to do anyway this year because stepping away from pro continent uh, pro continental continental level yeah um i kind of just wanted to do things a bit differently so it's, what do you say you rather if you had a choice would you rather do would you rather be creating content or would you rather be racing <laughs> Ooh, that's oh. a tough one yeah i don't know if i should answer that on live uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's just, it's hard to get a balance of both, isn't it? I think so, yeah. But what's really stood out for me doing these live streams is the the amount of viewers viewers that have had just on the live streams because they're showing a different side to what I do. Like as much as I'd love to, well, I'd love to show like every single second of training. Yeah, because that gives you the real insight. But I can't do that. For sure. But with live streams, you can. For um, sure. 
I think it's just the approach you take, isn't it? It's it's gonna find balance. But, uh, no, I definitely agree. Like my background, a lot of people don't know, but like you know, I've, I was pretty much semi-professional racing uh, in Enduro World Series, which is like one of the biggest mountain bike events in the world. And yeah, you know, to get that sponsorship and to get that level of funding to do it, you know, you have to be really creative on social media. But at the same time, you still got to train every day, and it's it's hard to get that balance right. Yeah, yeah. I think as well, um, I've seen, I think when you look at, it, well, it's like any job, isn't it? I mean, if you, if you have a full-time job, then that is obviously taking up the bulk of your hours in a sure. day. And then whatever you can do with your limited time around that is, is the best that you can do. Um, it's like you never sleep really, isn't it? It's like... You wake up, train, the evening, not relax. It's trying to put social media together and things like that. Yeah, that's it. Hey, hey, Matt. Thanks for joining us. There um, we go. In, in the chat there, a couple of questions. Yeah, somebody asked, do I prefer Zwift hills or real life hills? <laughs> well, it depends what train of difficulty I have on. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> 50% is enough for me. Yeah, that's it. Like, I, well, funny enough, there's some people with 100% training difficulty on most of the time, and I just like I look at them and I'm like, like don't don't put yourself in such a place where you have to you have to um, constantly be changing gear. You don't have to make it seem like it's exactly yeah. like riding out on the road. You know, just do. I mean. The thing is, with 100% training difficulty, it's almost a little bit too exaggerated, I find. Yeah, it's just, you know, you don't get that sort of what people remember is, you know, you can put 100% on Zwift, but you get no wind, no draft. It's like riding on your own. Yeah. In, in like a headwind. Yeah, I, I, I've i tried, I've tried going about the Zwift. Obviously, some of the steeper sections are you know, upwards of like 12, 13%, then if I'm on 100% training difficulty at, you know, threshold or 350 watts or something, it's, it's like, uh, it's like my cadence is so low that, it, you know, in what, in what world would I be going up a 13% <laughs> gradient, you know, 100% of FTP, and I'm grinding, like, uh, in the real world, it's more like, a 20% gradient, you'd be grinding at 60 RPM rather than on a 12% gradient. My claim to fame on the Alpha Zwift is, well, Alpha Air, sorry. I've done it, done it on, a, on a mountain bike two years ago. Oh. That's my claim to fame. It was, I had a single, well, it wasn't single speed, it was a single wing front, so 34 to front. And you had a 48 uh, Shimano 11 speed on the back. <laughs> I tell you now, those, those those mountain bike tires were up sixty psi. <laughs> did you uh, did you come back down it? Yes. Well, we were doing the Mare Gravel Avalanche at the top, where you start on the snow and race down to Borg San Maurice. But uh, we we did it the day after the Mega, so it was uh, flew down in the morning and then took our time back up. We did it in like an hour and twenty something. Oh. It's not bad. No. And that was after a day after we had to race for an hour pretty much solidly without stopping. <laughs> Fair. You have to think as well, that's with like, you know, that's not in normal cycling shoes with carbon fibre soles and things like that either, is it? Um, there's a carbon fibre frame, but like, oh. still probably like double, it's like, you know, 40 kilograms on bike. It's probably like a double a road bike. Oh. <laughs> I can feel a, I can feel a challenge coming on. <laughs> oh, it's hard. I'm surprised Cameron Jeffers did it on a Santander bike. Jesus Christ. Yeah, Probably. I bet, yeah. But, uh, no, we had a couple of questions. There was another one just back saying, do you think hill climb is going to be more competitive this year? 
Ooh, um, yeah, with the shortened season. Um, People are trying to get some more races in. Yeah, it could be. I still think, though, that in order to get it more competitive, you need more of them rather than uh, just yeah. kind of like the famous climbs or like the short climbs. Because I know, you know, I know riders and I know what and what what they will and what they won't travel for and they will not travel for anything less than three minutes it's just not worth it um even if they win it's like it's um you know even if they it's a it's one run and that's it isn't it yes yeah it's not like a road race in a sense where you know if, if you attack and you know you get brought back you've got another chance but yeah, that's what I found with a lot of racing, like cyclocross. You wait all day, you do twenty minutes, one hour, whatever it is, and that's it. Well, like road racing, like doing a crit or something, it can be a little bit longer. Makes it worth the drive. Hmm. I've got uh, some in the chat. Zach currently holding five point seven watt watts per kilogram. FTP, full fair play. <laughs> oh. I still haven't done an FTP yet. I think I need to do it this week. Um, Zach also asks, well, not asks, but says that he'd love to see the Nationals on Great Down Fell. That is, uh, that is a tasty climb, that one. That's a, that, that's, that's a question for you then. If you could have national camps anywhere, where, where would it be? Um, well, I'll start by saying that Hato was perfect because uh, it had lots of varied gradients. Yeah. So you really had to um, think Man. about how you were going to ride it rather than just riding it as hard as you could. Yeah. Uh, where could you gain time? Where could you afford to lose time? And then, I mean, the only climbs I've done that have come close to it, uh, because again, I'd love to have a long one. Yeah. Uh, to, to have the nationals on then it would probably be something like the tumble as mm. kind of average as that sounds it's kind of I'd quite like to see that like both or Rickos like South Wales Valleys yeah true true I mean I've done I've done both hill climbs I've done both of those hill climbs last two years they're both single gear efforts like you literally don't have to change gear right um particularly the rickos which garrett and luke like to ride on quite a lot <laughs> yeah i passed them a couple of times they normally do it like the, the three ways you know yeah yeah and uh they're kind of one kind of good gradient the whole way i think they're perfect especially if you want to do you know, an effort that's bang on, you know, 250 watts, 300 watts, whatever it is. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's a climb, well, those three or four climbs, either way, whatever way you do it, it's, you know, you stick it in a gear, you don't, you don't have to pick up gear, you just, you just go for it. Yeah, it becomes a different ball game when you start throwing in different, um, different gradients. Um... I, I'm really well. It's been pushed back now, but the Alpe, du, the Alpe d'Huez hill climb is something that really like whets my appetite because of the the hairpins. There's obviously quite a few of them, so something to aim for, isn't it? Yeah. There's a question in the chat. You probably know this more than me. Uh, get the riders list back up on iPad. Swipe the left on iPad. Swipe left on my iPad, yeah, I've seen that bit. Mm -hmm. I'm still in on, on Zwift myself, so. <laughs> I'll have a little browse, see if I can see it on the. Uh, I'm so. Uh, I'm just dropping to the back of the group as well to see who's, who's here, because I don't think I've seen most of the riders. I've seen most of them, yeah, there's a bit of a group of us up front. There's one little green dot about 100 metres off the back, and I don't know who it is. 
Alright, they're catching up now. They probably get, they probably get, um... Big slingshot. <laughs> oh, David's done it. Cheers, David. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh. Ooh, if I could... That's a good question, Matt. If you could add any map or place into Zwift, what would it be? Ooh. You go first. Uh... Wow. Um... Map or place? I think uh, I think Mallorca would be would be really nice actually. I don't think we want anything too hilly because I think that would defeat. I mean, Alpha Swift is half an hour long. Well, I say yeah. half an hour. <laughs> it's like an hour, uh, the average time. So I think uh, uh, or like something like New Zealand or something, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's actually a good shout. It's like somewhere which you know we're very rare to get to. Um, I know they have one or two fascinating climbs over there as well, and yeah, like luckily I've been over there to ride not bike, but yeah, we had a shuttle up the hill, thank God. But yeah, some of which you probably may want to go have a look at was uh, is a finale down in Italy. Oh yeah, some great climbs there, long as well. Some real good ones. Um. Oh, we're half hour in already. That was quite quick. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh... I like that show, actually. California. Mount yeah. Baldy. That's a, that's a very good show at Bondi. What's the one, um... What's the one where they do it, where they race the cars up? It's a really, um... Really famous car, hill climb. Um... So uh, Pikes Peak, ah. because it goes gravel at the end as well. Oh. I know uh, Travis Pastrana holds uh, the record in the Subaru w WRC of it. <laughs> yeah, he's a bit of a legend, isn't he? Yeah, very good on, on a mountain bike as well. And Ken Block, very surprising. Yeah. Mount Washington, oh, okay. Yeah, maybe I speak the most about Washington rings bell. Has the national hill climb course been announced? Yes, um, it's in Oxford. I've already ridden it, and it's like five minutes, maybe slightly less. It's pretty short. Average gradient on that? Uh, again, it's varied, but it's something like. Uh, What's the average and what's the peak, you know, peak percentage? I think the average is like 8, 9, and then the peak is like 16. Oh, nice. Yeah, but it starts off quite shallow, so it makes it quite quite worse. Like this first, I think it's like about 2k or something in the climb, and the first 300 meters, 400 meters is like 4%, so it does really get... Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, Matt, Matt's got it there. It's a little bit longer than 2.30. Um, because <laughs> I think they're starting it down at the pub rather than... Uh, On the actual pub. Yeah. Typical, always start, always start at the pub. <laughs> or okay. some, some landmark. I may give it a go. Like, I'd probably be nowhere near, but... Be, you know, I, I try and pace myself on some other things. You know, I done, did a national site across in Pembrey last year and... Like to do some different things, so yeah, they join in. It's a good target. I mean, I think uh, I think the benefit of hill climbing is that it's not like time trialing, where I guess you have to fit in a little bit. You know, you have to have some sort of equipment to go faster. Or um, although they are doing more and more non air events, but they're doing you know obviously with hill climbing it's more about just your participation and how, how
how fast can you get up the hill? Yeah, sure. Yeah, at your effort. Yeah. It's um. You've ever gone Kimmel Hill before, Ed? Which hill? Kimmel Hill. From mm. Neath. No. I've I'm top ten on it. It's like it's about four and a half minutes, but it's about eight hundred, nine hundred feet long. Super sort of undulating. Um. Yeah, I'm thinking me me doing Everest on it this year. Oh. You got to do around about fifty times. So yeah, eight hundred meters. So yeah, me doing Everest on it this year. I'm not too sure. But uh, no. And Everest, Maybe. and Everest is uh, is very unique. I saw somebody on YouTube yesterday live streams of double Everest without stopping. Yeah, Francis Kidd. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, people in the chat will know about that because some of them nearly watched all of it. <laughs> Felt it's pain. Oh, yeah. Raising money for a good cause. I think he was uh, doing it for the NHS, so... Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, fair play to him. Yeah, if there is anyone part of the NHS here, please email us at lightlock. Leave us at lightlock.com and we'll see what we can do for you. Um, did you hear about the guy who was bike stolen and Luke Rowe uh, give him a new one. That's right, yeah. Yeah, we've given him a, a light lock. Uh, just to, you know, say thank you and support him out as well. So, trying to work with guys like that as well. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's cool. That's brilliant. But, uh, no, it's uh, very different here in the UK at the moment. Yeah. But I think everyone's sticking to it quite well. Yeah, I think you've only got to look at the stats. The, yeah, and the participation on Zwift for one thing. I mean, sure, especially the, num the numbers. Yeah, just going through the roof. Yeah, like I said, I went out for an hour yesterday, Glen Ethan back, and saw about two cars and about five, six riders riding on their own. So interesting. But I think you still got to be wary. You know, you're not allowed to draft or. You know, it does, it's like, you know, it just stays in the air, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I want answers for uh, at least 16 hours. Not all of them, then. <laughs> yeah, that's Ruben. He's a, he's a die-hard uh, fan. Yeah. Fair play. Fair play, Ruben. That's, uh... end of the day, like, I'm... it's funny. You know, these are the guys that hold the chat together. You know, there's some there's some people that you know are are there, and they like Lord, for example. Like Lord's been made a moderator uh, on this chat. Oh yeah. Quentin, Quentin the same, and um, you know the it, it goes an awful long way to to help and to I guess. Not just help me while I'm getting through whatever I'm getting through, but they also help the chat understand and. Oh well, yeah, it's, it's, it keeps conversation flowing. It keeps sort of everyone, you know, it's, it's, it's just adding a bit more momentum to your ride and keeps you sort of motivated. So it's pretty cool that it's actually people that care about what we do as well. We have that in like Lightlock. We have a couple of people who really support us, buy every product, or really try and spread the word. Which is really nice. Like, I think it means a lot more than what they actually think, which is which is nice. There was um there was a story James was telling me about uh, a guy. Ah, oh, forgive me now. He was um, I don't know. It was Germany or one of the, one of the countries yeah. in Northern Europe, and um, he said that he sent a picture to you guys of his bike with obviously a light lock. Um, that had been, you know, attempted, somebody had attempted to cut through it. He was uh, good. And then you guys, I think you sent him another lock. They got broken into again. Yeah, and they tried to cut it again. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a guy in Berlin. Um, so he had a, 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 a foldable bike, a mate from foldable bike, which was with e-bikes. Really expensive and they're really, really um, sort of well-known up there. Yeah, luckily, uh, 
I think he tried to burn the first one. And then the second one, they try and cut through, but I uh, know. <laughs> <laughs> David, uh, I'm blowing out of 40 minutes. <laughs> Thanks for riding the chat. David, it's on slingshot, so if you do fall behind, don't worry, you'll uh, you, you be catching yourself. Yeah, oh, that's boy. it. Um, oh, the first you. time I did this, um, I think there was only like three or four of us. <laughs> and what? Ben, Ben, who I will drop his name, I'll name and shame. <laughs> ben, um, ben was riding like really, really hard because we were on like quite a lumpy course. I think it was in Yorkshire and yeah. I was, I was pressing on up the climbs. So I was just keeping the speed of the group up and he was pressing as hard as I was. I think we were doing about five to five and a half watts per kilo. And I don't, he didn't realize at the time, but the elastic band was on. Yeah. And we got to about 15 minutes in of an hour ride. And then he, uh, and then he got dropped. <laughs> well, not got dropped, but he no. got off, even though, he uh, he didn't actually have to, so it's uh, so it's it's uncertain ground. It it happens in real life as well, you know. People are very actually. It's one of the reasons why you know, I still ride with Binya and I still like go on their rides is because it's not very often that you, you get to ride. Really, yeah. You, yeah. What, like, you, what, it, it seems to me like we have brink, uh, Brinkle farmers here and. Luckily, I know all the guys well, so uh, yeah, it's nice to get out. I do like the odd Catholic stop, mind you. Not, <laughs> not just going for four hours straight, you know, like, do like a bit of a coffee and a cake now and again. So, what's your go to coffee? Uh, you know, I do like a caramel latte. Oh, you okay. get the sugar and the uh, caffeine. <laughs> uh, that recent study is quite. Um, Interesting. Coffee doesn't actually dehydrate you in any way. Hmm. It's interesting, but no, I like a bit of kick. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely. And like any cake, as long as it fills the spot. There's a place down in Pembrey on 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 the beach, and they have a multiple choice of cakes, but they're absolutely massive slices. Uh, quite Bike racing without mercy is a light lock still in 52 if that fits around your waist to see if it's approved by Yellow Dues Insurance. So, uh, yeah, so the 52 is the smallest, and we have a 70, and then an 85, and then this is circumference. And then what you do, you have a, the light lock uh, wearable kit at the top, it's loads to wear it then. But uh, yeah, approved by Yellow Dues. Um, we do a theft protection with them as well, which is on our website. So, if you buy a light lock, you can buy a theft protection. I think it's roughly about 25, 30 pounds for a light up silver. It's up to any bike up to 1,500 pounds. And then every time you lock your bike up, obviously you can see, but every time you lock your bike up, you will be insured. I like, I like that. Um, <laughs> um, where's it going? Corinthian, light lock around your waist just becomes a light belt. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah. It, and actually, if you you know the you know the bit where you actually put the belt through through, through your jeans, yeah. And um, if your holes are big enough on your jeans, you can actually fit. <laughs> <laughs> so you can actually the, the wearable kit can actually hold up your bloody jeans as well, which is really cool. Well, yeah. the um, yeah. so the uh. <laughs> It's a shame that we can't get me up live. We'll have to try it again because I got, got one or two of the products next to me to show, but it's a shame we can't get them up. But yeah, maybe next time. Yeah, definitely. I'll, uh, I'll upgrade my tech skills. <laughs> I need to work on it as well. Um, but um, it was uh, something that I saw where you can, if you're riding with somebody else who has another light lock you can attach them thing. and you can have like two or Along. three bikes yeah so what that is it's because obviously um the silvers and golds can't fit together but a silver the silver can and it goes to another gold can because they're all male and female ended yeah so 
yeah, really good. Um, really nice to sort of, um, if you've got obviously yourself or, um, uh, you know, if you family, it's good to have a couple of, uh, Lord, thank you for putting that link in. And Ed's one. My dad? Yes, yes. Is it Chris? Is it? Yeah, just, just go put it. Sorry, something at the door. Oh, sorry, Cal. No, uh, no, uh, no, uh, technical, no, uh, no technical difficulties there. <laughs> No, it's nice, you know, like our products are um, not just another bike lock, they're trying to be the sort of, you know, achieving what uh, the, the traditional bike lock can do. So the goals are wearable and because they're circular, they can fit around um, fit around your waist. And then the D-lock is the same thing, they're all flexible. And our FlexiU is the world's first flexible D-lock, so where D-lock can't fit around the lamppost, I will, I will light lock flex you large can. Yeah, I've got to say, the, the website is is really clean, and the videos on there, they go an awful long way um, in showing, like, you know, demonstrating the use of it. Yeah, it's like our torsion testing, which is the most common sort of theft on a bike lock. Where they actually twist to using a bar or they twist the bike. Um, if you look at the Flex U one, it lasts for um, 40 odd seconds. Well, I think it's less than that, about 15 seconds, where ours is uh, much longer than that. But we show it breaking as well, you know, it's, you know, how much force is actually under. Where if you do that with a, with a bar, you'll probably end up breaking the bar or breaking your arm or something first. Yeah. Uh, CB, uh, you were saying about controllable trainer, what setting do I use? Um, so, I've noticed that Cameron Jeffers has done a very handy piece of information down below on his description every time he does a live stream and it gives you like an FAQ. Uh, one thing I'll definitely have to do is put in my trainer difficulty setting, which is roughly the same as cameras, and it's kind of like 50 to 60% yeah. trainer difficulty. I don't, um, yeah, I don't use 100%. We did touch on it earlier. It seems a bit too uh, reactive for my yeah. liking. It's almost not as, it, it, well, actually, it's not as realistic as out on the road, because out on the road you can almost see the gradient coming, like, towards you, whereas uh, when you're indoors, like here now, there is a section of road somewhere near here that goes one to two percent, but you don't ever really see it. Yeah. And, and yet, the trainer will pick that up and... Yeah, especially if it's on like a one percent gradient, you still, you can really feel it. Yeah, whereas out on the road, yeah. you wouldn't necessarily feel a one percent gradient. You get a bit more of a draft, you get the wind, you get a little bit more, so it's it's definitely... It's a totally different way of cycling. Yeah. Uh, question in the chat quickly: What's a light lock when it's at home? Um, a lot of theft happens at home, um, and it's really, really um, common these days, which is a shame. But um, even when your bikes are inside, lock them up for something, or lock them, uh, you know, front wheel to back wheel. Just try and make it as sort of hard for them to get your bike. You know, if you're in a shed, lock it up. Maybe put some stuff over it. You know, just try and slow them down as much as you can make it hard for them so they have to make noise so yeah. a bike doors is still a good option uh cheers for that question new cyclist but, uh, yeah. no it's yeah. good uh, question that you know uh my mate got his bike uh stolen but yeah three of his bikes stolen he was an intense tracer which is one of like five in the uk uh a downhill bike and his road bike all gone overnight you know so I don't think you locked them up, you just had them in a the garage, but anything will sort of make you harder is good. Yeah. Uh, somebody said they couldn't race, couldn't join today, their legs are a bit broke after yesterday. <laughs> Ellis, uh, good effort though. <laughs> I still haven't done a, a Zwift race yet, so 
Ah, oh, Lewis, yeah. You don't know what you're missing. <laughs> I don't know whether just to go straight to a C race. Like, my FTP is about 225 at the moment, and that's... I haven't done a proper FTP. That's over, like, any ride over, like, an hour. I haven't done any ride under an hour yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what would... Um, so would your FTP be in watts per kilo, then, roughly? Is there a range... I'm not too sure. Like, I really need to do another one. Like, the last time I did an FTP was probably when I was racing same professional mountain biking about two and a half, three years ago. Now it's about two, four, five then. But obviously, I was only like 18. Yeah, jo Johnny. Johnny. Um, Jonathan, yeah. I, Johnny. I have seen Jonathan do a couple. Yeah. Yeah, see, see if you find it. D is. I think. Um, you know, D is the very, very first stepping stone, so I think it's unlikely you'd be... Uh, I've raced on a couple of times at uh, the Marlon Velodrome. We've had some good little laughs there. Yeah. I think yeah. That's, a good, that's a good point from Ruben, there, actually. Um, uh, a lot of the riders that I coach, um, they've been obviously racing on Zwift once or twice a week now because there's what's going on. They want to take over motivation and things like that, so... They've uh, they've been entering some half races, and uh, like roughly ninety percent, ninety percent of them like really push you to to seeing how hard you can go for an hour. Um, and it, ironically, I actually tweeted the other day that FTP isn't necessarily five percent of your twenty minute power. Um, it could be four percent. It could be six percent. Could be seven percent. Um, <laughs> That that is just an estimate of you know, what think, you're capable of. Yeah, I think the good thing about Zwift racing as well is you're never racing the same person, or it's very rare. Yeah. So like, you, you, you're not turning up the same crit race, and it's like, oh, these guys are here. Or, you know, it's very like you've got to race your own race and have your own tactic on Zwift. Pretty cool. Yeah. But, uh, but it's great, even, even the short ones. I think that's what that... The downtown crit city um, has really brought to the game is you know, lots of people are able to do uh, ten mile races, which basically take them twenty minutes, and it's uh, full gas the whole way. There's hardly well, there's pretty much no freewheeling, and that gives you also a very accurate twenty minute effort. So you get the best of both worlds, really. Um. So we got around about eight minutes left, Ed. Um, I don't know whether you just want to just maybe just push your affiliate link a bit. Um, just kind of what we're trying to do for you as well as, um, you know. Yeah, definitely. So for those of you that have just joined, because usually the, um, the stream tends to populate as we get further into the ride. Yeah. Um, so... Lewis has joined us today. He's outside in his glorious back garden while I'm sweating with steel air inside his house. And uh, yeah, Lewis works for Lightlock, who makes some pretty wonderful, innovative bike locks. Not far away from me, actually. So they're made in Wales, designing Wales, shipped from Wales. Yeah. And uh, they've supported me this year. They come on board. We're doing a uh, little partnership We've got an affiliate link. We've got a code for ten percent off if you want to snap up uh, a light block. The details can be found in the description. Lord has also been very kind in the chat and posted the link as well. If you want to go there, there's a bunch of different locks. They can be worn. They're very flexible and also very light, and that's something that I like to <laughs> focus on quite a lot. Yeah. But I think uh, it's worth mentioning that we're trying to sort of help you uh, sort of fund your career and your season this year, although it's a little bit different now. Um, so 10% uh, goes, 10% discount for the customer who's buying it, but also 10% goes back to Ed. And what we're trying to do there is sort of, you know, it's it's only a little bit, obviously, but um, for any sort of racer, a little bit is better than nothing, you know. That could be a good, you know, race meal or that could be something I've, something um, to help with travel expenses so we're trying to help out anything <laughs> not animal 
friendly if they're from Wales. They're not best <laughs> dragons, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. No, I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, any questions, don't hesitate to use the next six minutes. We can always do rapid fire. <laughs> yeah, we can do rapid fire or I can uh, comment back. <laughs> uh, after the uh, after the ride, but um, if you have any real questions, you can always email us as well. Uh, I'm I'm on the live chat mostly every day as well, so uh, always there to help and discuss. Even if it's just bike security, you know, like we're really on top of things at the moment um, in terms of bike security. So um, if anyone's from London or anything like that, Ed, have you seen these new bike sheds where uh, at, at the end of the street there'll be like a bike locking place for everyone? Do you know what? I actually saw something uh, online, but I didn't read it. Just tell yeah. me what it is. So basically, it's uh, it's like a little garage for everyone's bikes to go into, who like lives on that street. But what's really worth recommending to people listening at the moment as well, no insurance um, company or very little will actually sort of um, insure your bike if it's actually in one of those. Because it's a shared... It's, a, it's, it's technically a shared garage, um, so it's not technically part of your house. Yeah. And in addition to that, because um, it can be accessed by anyone, um, if you, obviously if you, if you have the code. Um, so if you think if somebody doesn't shut that properly, the, the first thing that um, people has got to do is literally open it, close it. He can do his work without being seen and, you know, obviously cut up cut locks and take your bikes away so yeah uh, yeah it's, it's worth mentioning you know these things are really good but it's worth you know we know what insurance um companies want and i'm sure these days you know we, we work really closely with yellow jersey for this information um and we you know we we have them on like speed dial so if there is a question which we don't know we will always try and help out not try and keep everyone in the dark but yeah, yeah you even if it's just bike security, you know? Yeah, speaking of which, uh, Bike Racing Help Mercy, Phil, he's just about to buy. Please can I confirm that the 52 is silver with a single band and the wearable is all I need? Yes. Uh, what's your waist size, if you don't mind me asking? <laughs> Phil, Phil is like 63 kilos. He's, uh, he's a skinny guy. Yeah, he's <laughs> roughly the same size as me. <laughs> I would say 70 or 85 is probably our best because... You can get it through like a lamppost, um, where like the 52 is more of a coffee stop, traditional bike stand or something. Uh, there's another question in there. Just a, uh, yeah, and will be gold standard on the insurance. Um, three, so if you want theft protection and your bike's over 1,500 pounds, you have to buy gold. Um, but if you have your own insurance, make sure what they state as well. So. Any bike may have to have a gold lock, or some may even want you just to have a, a silver lock. So, uh, this happened to me. My trusty steed got stolen, and the insurers wouldn't pay out, and it's not attached to my flat. Exactly that, Simon. So, um, the bike stands, which, okay, there's the community bike sheds, uh, which you all have a lock to. Um, yeah, they won't insure it. Um, but uh, if you have, uh, if you want to lock it inside your house, make sure it's always ground anchored, because insurance will, have, will also want that. Um, yeah, definitely worth checking. Uh, yes, I have yellow jersey. It requires gold. So, um, yeah, if you buy with Ed's code, get him get ten pound off. But uh, no, really make sure what your insurance states as well. If you just want a, a lock which you know is going to be close to you once you stop for a cafe ride. Silver's going to be more than enough. But if it's going to be there for a long period of time, or you feel a little bit like you're in a more of a high-risk area, gold is always worth recommending again. But, uh, no. Oh, I'm out of breath now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these hills are unforgiving here. <laughs> uh, Simon, if you want to message me tomorrow, I'll be on live chat on Lightlock. Uh, we can see what what we can do for you. Uh, if you want a, a new lock, that is. Yeah, that's really good of you, Lewis. 
Yeah, we'll try and help that out. So if, any, if anyone here, maybe was a high risk. I agree. <laughs> um, you know that any city is a high risk. We know that. So, um, you know, like even places where you don't think are high risk uh, may have more of an affluent area, people who may have more money. That could also be deemed more of a high risk. So, um, yeah, hi. Oh, so that's Neil. So, so Neil Barron is our CEO. He's the inventor of Lightlock. Hi guys, quick thank you from me. Make me want to go as Rick myself. Neil, you definitely should. <laughs> so yeah, Neil is yeah, the, <laughs> Neil is the uh, Neil is the inventor and the owner of Lightlock. Um, so coming from the the head himself, I feel a bit nervous now. It's like he's been listening to me. I hope I said anything wrong. <laughs> That's it. Uh, no. Holland is high risk. Oh yeah, certainly. You know, I've I've read some stats on that place. Well, bikes get mixed. So, um, really, want to give us a message? We can see, we can see what we can do for you. And that's the group ride. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Twenty-one miles. Even these group rides are really good. You know, it's it's like what everyone was saying in the ride. It's uh, it's today is sort of a cool down for them. You know, having a an hour ride like this. You know, it's, it's probably a good idea. Yeah, definitely. You can stop swearing now, Simon Hill. <laughs> like I'm sorry. If I am, I'm really bad. Very sorry. <laughs> no, it's good. That's uh, that's perfect. It was great to talk to you and have you on because uh, I think it's something that we should definitely do more of, especially with people being in doors and yeah. Like the fact that a lot of people got a nice ride out of that and we were able to have a chat as well on the live stream. It's almost like two different audiences. Yeah, it's a shame we couldn't get my live stream up. Uh, we'll, we'll try and sort that for next time. We'll, uh, we'll show you a bit more of the product next time. But I hope this has been a bit more of, a, more of an introduction to Lightlock, which you may not have heard of before. Um, and what we're trying to do with Ed and obviously trying to reduce the amount of bike theft all over the world. So um, like you're saying... We're trying to support Ed as much as possible. Please feel free to use the affiliate link. That's why it's there. Um, we want to help Ed as much as we want to help everyone else as well. So um, thanks for everyone for riding along and for the live stream. <laughs> Thoroughly enjoyed. I'm a bit sweaty now, but no, definitely good. You've sold my day off on a, on a Monday. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, it is like somebody mentioned it is like a podcast. <laughs> You know, like we we, we we didn't just talk about bike security. We talked about the Ineos ride yesterday. We talked about what people have been up to. Double everything. I could never do that. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Yeah, no, good. Um, yeah, thanks for everyone who has listened in. Uh, thanks for everyone who's taking part in the Zwift. Uh, we're probably going to do another one of these maybe soon. So um, if you are part of Zwift... Obviously, we'll, we'll advertise it again. Um, send either uh, myself a message or Ed. We will add you in for the ride. So we had, how many did we have today? 37 or? Yeah, I think it was, yeah. So let's see if we can get the 50. Yeah, 50 is the max. So how do we contact you? So you can, Simon, um, you can drop me a message at lewis at lightlock.com. Um, L-E-W-I-S at L-I-T-E-L-O-K.com. Um, I'll be back on my emails tomorrow if you want any help. Obviously, uh, obviously, about your insurance and stuff like that as well. We can do that for you. So uh, don't be afraid. Brilliant. Yes, yeah, just bought one. Oh, thank you, Bike Racing Without Mercy. I hope that uh, I hope uh, the light looks good for you. Um, obviously, email me as well if you have any photos. Any media content is great for us as well. So. Um, we're still very little in a big pond full of bike security. So, uh, yeah, thank you for buying one. And Wahoo Le Call now. <laughs> yeah. Simon Hill, for the all. We went through yeah. a little change halfway through the week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. I found another sponsor. Yeah, yeah, they saw that the other day. It was something like um, hashtag um, let wet ride or something. <laughs> can't believe you can't believe you brought that up. 
<laughs> so, so, Quentin, Lord, Niels, they're all going to jump on that now. Yeah. The founders, the founders of the hashtag. <laughs> well, there's a lot of you guys on there, isn't it? You, is, is, is Cam part of that? Yeah, Cam's part of that, yeah. Richard? Yeah. I think me and Prick had a good race up uh, the uh, the epic pom on that port ride. Yeah, he did actually. Yeah, he did a re- he had a really good ride. I was about thirty seconds behind him at the finish. We were in the same group all the way. He just got me at the end. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, with Pritch, he always has that big sprint to the end. <laughs> yeah, I don't. No, I'm only sixty kilograms, so I don't mind <laughs> I think I just improved my FTP by accident. Thanks for the ride, Ed. L'Oreal, that's great. Thought that helped. <laughs> so there you go. Not everyone's on a, on a training ride. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, that, that is an hour for... A lot of people, yeah. A lot of people, quite hard, yeah. That's amazing. You didn't start to run really, did we? So... Yeah. Pretty good. Now, how do you... Get rid of wet. You can find a right? <laughs> wet pro campaign. <laughs> oh god. Um. Yeah. If uh, if if Ed wants to, we'll do a couple more of these in the future. And uh, hopefully we'll have a bit more viewers. We'll have a lot more joiners on the ride. And um, yeah, keep helping Ed as much as we can uh, in any way possible. So yeah, thank you. Definitely. I'll uh, I'll keep my rest days free for things like this because uh, oh yeah, it's, good, it's yeah. always it's always worth doing something. Yeah, I think it, yeah, it's quite exciting to ride with somebody, isn't it? Like people, you know, a lot of lots of ones with. It's pretty cool to um, ride with somebody as well. You know, like oh, I've seen Ed on YouTube. Let's do a group ride sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, Ooh, yeah. Yeah, right. I'm gonna. Off we go. I'm gonna prevent myself from becoming more moist and sweaty because I'm. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna have to give my handlebar tape another wipe. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, it's time for a bank holiday beer before work starts tomorrow. So. Yeah, go and enjoy it. Definitely yourself. So, uh, yeah, thanks for everyone. Thanks for uh, joining in. Hopefully, you will be on the Zwift ride next time. And. Uh, Thank you for everyone who has made a bit of an interest into light love. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Catch you all soon, guys.